Hey, it's Macro Geek, and time to talk about RG552. What's the current state of uh, development on it? It is, let's see, March 5th, 2022. This week, Black Serif released um, an Android 9.0 uh, custom Android ROM for this. So, very vanilla Android. Um, if you didn't trust the factory firmware to be secure, Black Serif's probably a more reputable source. And what do we get from this? We get moved from 7 to 9, so that means some apps that wouldn't run on 7 will run on 9. Um, we get a slightly newer graphics driver, and as of the second update he released this week, we have a slight overclock and undervolt applied by default to the system. So conveniences this has over the default Android ROM um, looks a little prettier. It does not ship with the um, Android TV, the ATV overlay. Um, we get with the ability to slide over and use the back home and uh, details buttons. And if you pull down, we've got fan control, which can be off, auto, and high. We've got this mushroom button switches you between a Nintendo style confirm and back button or an Xbox style. And that also maps the shoulder buttons to work with the Xbox streaming apps. So if you're gonna try and remote play Xbox, which is, you know, not great on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, but it can work. Um, this makes your triggers work because they didn't work by default. They were mapped to the wrong buttons. Um, other than that, when you flash this onto your system, you will not have Google Apps or the Google Play Store. You would have to sideload those using to, uh, TWRP. Um, so you would use the OpenG Apps, um, ARM 64-bit, and then you want the Pico build which is the smallest one, which is just basically the play service and the background services to run that. Um, if you want the ATV look, you can download that app. There's a free and a pro version. It looks like that. Um, I find it doesn't always 100% work with the D-pad as well as the factory one did, which was probably a hacked version of this. Um, but I'm for the most part using this. Um, how does it run? Well, the first thing that I noticed Here's God of War running at 1x. And yes, there's occasional stutters. It's basically 30 to 40 frames. But I mean, this is totally playable now. And it was, you know, it was 70% speed before. And if you, um, if you try other games, like let's go um, Final Fantasy. I can go in here and go settings and change the... So what you want to do is set your display resolution, hardware scaler to the same as your rendering res, and then you can put this up to like 3x on most games, which looks a lot prettier. God of War is the weird exception that is just awful hard to emulate, but say you were going to do JRPGs, Look how nice this looks. 3x PSP resolution. Pretty crunchy pixel art. That's just gorgeous. And um, most PlayStation or PSP stuff you can run at 2x or 3x res. There we go, there's some more. Text is real clear. So PSP is great now. I mean, it was good before, but it's real good. Um, no issues with Mario 64 run or N64 runs well. Um, let me kill, close that, close that. Um, let me see if this will work. This is hit or miss on me because um, it's very experimental, but This is remote play to my Xbox that is also on my home network. So. Oh, forgot about the traps. I haven't played this in months. So, I mean, that is, this is on my 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band. I've got a Google Mesh network, and uh, 
I mean, that's totally playable. So, uh, let's see. I don't remember how to disconnect. Um, what else? Dreamcast. Light mode. I haven't paid for the premium upgrade yet. Uh, let's play. I always do Crazy Taxi. You guys are probably sick of that. Let's do Sonic Adventure 2. And I'm told you, if you have the premium upgrade on Redream, you can run some games in high def. I'm just running the default 640 by 480 uh, VGA out setting. Oops, I forgot which one was my confirm button. Wish you could skip the. Oh, you can skip it. I didn't think you could skip the jump out of the plane. And I noticed on Dreamcast the thumbsticks were a little too sensitive, so I have mine set with a 20% dead zone. I might bump that up even a little more. But you can see this is just running really well. Oh, not enough speed to get that one. I think what's messing me up here is the button mapper. Let's try it. There we go. Oh, we got hit. So you can see that works great. Um, and then I, for my retro stuff, I'm using RetroArch and doing a lot of, like, Super Mario World. And again, just really good looking screen. Oh, now my buttons are backwards, so we just toggle, because I've got this one mapped to the Xbox preset. But no timing issues, no major input lag. Um, so I found the 9.0 build to be really great, uh, adds a lot of convenience features. Downside is you will have to wipe the whole system and then either restore from a backup utility or move all your stuff over. It does add support for XFAT file systems on SD2. So, um, I've got a 64 gig card in there. I'll probably get a, a 128 so I can put some more optical based stuff in. Um, I have forgotten to reinstall duck station. I need to do that because I have some PlayStation stuff on this card. Um, but so far, everything runs great, and I like it over the, the stock firmware. I have heard that Jalos, um, Jalos and um, 351 Elect are getting much better on this system. Um, Black Seraph and I think it's Fute who's working on Jalos is they're sharing code back and forth. So like a lot of these fan management and uh, optimizations are getting into both projects. Um, limitations will be that all your Linux-based file systems that boot from this slot, they're not going to be able to access um, the Vulkan driver, which things like Redream and the uh, uh, PP, SSPP, and the Dolphin emulator, they all utilize that um, to accelerate their graphics a little bit. And um, 
so Linux doesn't have a signed Vulkan driver. Um, I will say Vulkan on this system, this system on a ship is limited to 1.0, not 1.1. So it's still probably never going to do a super great job with newer accelerated titles, but it does work. Oh, one more thing I forgot. Um, this is the build of um, Dolphin that shipped with the original handheld. Um, and then I put it onto the 9.0 version. But... Um, Do not buy the system because you think it's going to run Dolphin really well. It's not, but it kind of runs. So as you can see, I'm running in like 22 frames. So there's definitely some slowdown, but it's crazy that the system can even do this at all. So like, you want to play Animal Crossing. I'm told that'll run full speed. Uh, this is pretty choppy, but I mean, you can do it. It works. Um, Mario Kart Double Dash runs at like 30% speed. It's, uh, it's a lot easier because you can think your moves out in, in between frames. Uh, so we'll see where, where things go from here. But uh, yeah, the Black Seraph build, it's worth the $10 a month on his Patreon to get access to these builds and, and try it out. And I'm, I'm much happier with how it is now than how it shipped stock. I still would say if you want a super emulation powerhouse, you probably want to wait on the Odin, but the Odin is still in its Indiegogo phase, so you can get one of these today, and there's plenty of people who bought them and were disappointed and are selling them used, um, which is what I bought someone's used one, uh, and I'm happy with it so far. It's, it's my couch handheld. I'm working my way through Mario World and some other NES, SNES stuff on the couch with it and really enjoying it. So that's your update for this week. Thanks for watching. Um, hit like and subscribe. You know the drill. And uh, I'll keep reporting my findings and my tests on different games. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by.